So hi guys, Tim and Toby back in the final episode of how Germany was winning the war. And this episode, uh, episode 7, we'll be talking about the uh, kind of the first half, the German successful half of the Italian campaign in July 1943. Or specifically, uh, 10th slash 11th of July 1943. So on the 10th of July 1943, um, Italy is invaded and really technically Sicily as well is invaded, but mainly Italy, by German Fauschmjägers and ground troops, uh, because Italy, who is a quite a famous ally to Germany, um, kind of, you know, they needed support, <laughs> you know, with all this um, kind of, kind of uh, pro-ally uh, nation going on, and a lot of partisans going around in Italy, there was a lot of... Uh, basically scuffle going on with the civilians going against Italy so basically as as Germany was an Italian ally Germany basically came in support of Italy and more of a, a more of a kind of better military uh, statistic is that in Sicily um, Germany uh, took it as kind of to be used for aerodromes and airfields so they can fly, um, uh, basically, the Luftwaffe in uh, to bomb Italy and that every, when they actually did land in Italy. Um, that is, when they, you know, first took it over. Which the Allies and the Americans did the exact same thing when they um, invaded uh, Italy. So, um, so, Toby, do you want to uh, continue the story? Yes, so... Um, pretty much the Germans uh, had to really scramble to get into Italy, and it was part of the reason they called off Operation Zitadel at um, Kursk, because they had to defend their allies, because to lose an ally would be a political blow as well as a military one at this stage. Um, Churchill, particularly, always for some reason wanted to go through um, the Mediterranean, um, but they basically said, no, we're launching over the Lord next year. So, yeah, some of the Allied divisions were pulled out. But nevertheless, substantial Allied commitment here. And it's really been forgotten, quite tragically, honestly. Uh, the, the troops nicknamed themselves the D-Day Dodgers. And uh, there was a song which went to the tune of Lily Marlene, a very famous wartime song that they made. Um, uh, there's a bit more history behind that. You can look it up if you want. But... Um, yeah, the Germans really sent in the cream of the crop, really, in terms of their troops. Um, they sent in uh, the Hermann Goring Division, so the only Luftwaffe Panz Division. Uh, they sent in the Fallschirmjägers themselves, and they actually whisked away um, Mussolini, who'd been captured inside um, a hotel. Uh, they actually were not led by Otto Skorzny, as a lot of people for some reason think. They were actually led by a Luftwaffe commander. Skorzny nearly ruined the entire operation because he actually wanted to go in the light aircraft with Mussolini and it very nearly couldn't take off and crashed, so that would have been bad. And also he brought along SS troops merely for vanity, more or less, instead of um, yeah, just doing the sensible thing and staying behind and letting the Luftwaffe experienced powers go in first. Uh, you have the Leibstandarte as well, which had taken a real mauling from the Russians, but still it, it ended up perpetrating several pretty tragic war crimes against the uh, Italians, as because there were, was a lot of partisan activity around there. But again, they just killed everyone effectively, so very, very heavy-handed. So I'll hand you back to Tim. All right, thanks, Toby. So when you have Germany, specifically Germany this is, um, invading another allied country you're going to get one thing and that's trade a lot of it <laughs> um, so a lot of Italian it's a lot of photographs you see of Italian troops are wearing Germans equipment and vice versa because you know if you invade if Germany is invading Russia you know Russia's not an ally to Germany so Germany's not really going to bother or anything really to do with trade so of course and it really did strengthen the um, resistance in Italy as well, having the Italians and then the cracked SS Germans um, with them as well, which uh, really took um, 
hold to uh, allies as well. Um, but yeah, so is there any... Um, and then, of course, a couple of days later, the American um, Fifth Army and the uh, British Eighth Army under Patton and Montgomery, uh, and then they intervened as well, and as they say, the rest is military history. So, is there anything you want to uh, just uh, say on Terry, just before we end the video? Oh, I don't think so. I think you've summed it up very well. So, okay, yeah, thanks. I'll pass you back to Tim. So, um, yeah, so, thanks for watching, guys. That has been the, uh, yeah, final episode, episode 7, of How Germany Was Winning the War. And now, just for a little teaser, or really kind of not a teaser at all, but our, uh, our next series, which we're going to do on, is going to be on the kind of forgotten war, if you can kind of call that. But that is the um, the Far East campaign from 1941 to 1945. So, um, and of course we're going to do about the forgotten army, the 14th army. So, thanks for watching guys, have a good one, and um, we'll see you in the next series, or next videos. So, see ya, bye!